Well, good, good afternoon. Good evening, uh, everyone. I, I think uh, um, I'm not so good on, on opening jokes, but it crossed my mind that in, in baseball, um, the, the, the hitter who, the batter who appears in this position is uh, um, the, sort of the fine, so-called cleanup hitter, um, is usually a big guy who's stupid. And uh, um, so all that's to say is that I think I'm going to keep things very simple and, and quick. Um, I have no choice uh, because I'm a, a big and stupid. Uh, so, um, well, hopefully not that stupid. But, it, it, but it, it, uh, I'd like to thank um, uh, the organizers for inviting me. It's, as some of you know, I work very intensively in Syria and Iraq. Um, I don't accept many speaking uh, opportunities such as this because I don't have the time, but it's it's nice for me to support the Case Matrix Network that um, I've attempted to support for many years now, and it also gives me an opportunity to think a bit uh, beyond um, the work that that we're busy with at, at the everyday. So um, I've been asked to speak to. There's no slides. I've been asked to speak to. Uh, um, national and international investigative capacity and uh, what are the uh, problems, how can we improve it and so forth. I won't really focus on the international. Um, I think the, the tenor of the day is really on, on domestic uh, uh, capacity. And um, what the case matrix does is, is very, very important because I think we're in a, essentially a, a third phase in, in, in um, the field, uh, the application of international criminal justice now, almost historically, if you will. The first phase is, of course, Nuremberg, uh, subsequent trials, Tokyo trials, and so forth. Um, the second phase, I think, is, is basically coming uh, very quickly to a close. Um, the period of, uh, that started in 93 with the creation, the uh, formation of the first ad hoc tribunal, ICTY, ICTR, and then numerous uh, hybrid courts. And now I believe we've entered uh, a third phase, and that is, uh, of course, what we've been speaking about all day, which is the application of ICHL, International Criminal and Humanitarian Law, um, in domestic jurisdictions. And um, if, uh, with, of course, perhaps the occasional hybrid uh, tribunal and, and, and the ICC, um, but the ICC, of course, is uh, many of the people, I think, who send communications to the court uh, people, they, they fail to realize that the ICC has very, very limited resources, never mind the jurisdictional problems that, um, or challenges, if you will, that the court needs to deal with. So really the future of ICHL is, uh, in my opinion, it's, it's um, application uh, domestically. Um, and um, with, um, and this is what I do in, in my day job, with um, real support from civil societal groups, which at the present time, um, with very, very rare exceptions, are not structured in a way, they're structured for advocacy purposes, they're not structured in a way um, to um, meet the evidentiary standards that, that um, criminal investigative um, uh, bodies uh, require in order to secure, uh, must meet in order to secure a conviction. So, um, right, where are we with uh, domestic uh, capacity? Well. Um, it is worthwhile, I think, to distinguish between Western uh, national war crimes units uh, that we find in most, uh, certainly most of Western Europe now, Canada, the United States, um, and um, I think m the, the sort of units that, that Emily and, and uh, Ilya's uh, Case Matrix, uh, Olympia Case Matrix Network uh, supports, places like Indonesia, Mexico, and, and, and so forth. But having said that, any domestic... Um, uh, domestic uh, war crimes units taken as a whole, and indeed international bodies, um, uh, OTP of the ICC, where I worked, or ICTY, ICTR, the, the hybrids, um, um, where there is um, areas for improvement, they tend to be uh, very, very, sim the, the same problems appear again and again. And um, so what I'd like to do is, is speak for a couple of minutes on what those problems are and and perhaps present some uh, highly tentative, uh, one or two highly tentative ideas about how, how we might address this, um, additional to everything that Case Matrix Network and, and other, other, a few other groups are, are doing. So 
I think it's worth taking at least a minute just to, just to consider what, what are the elements of the criminal investigative process. Um, um, it's not just a bunch of cops, let's say. It actually, really, we need to think in terms of three components. The first is the um, typically called the investigative component. It might be better for our purposes to think of it as the collection component. Um, that element, usually police-driven, that hoovers up large amounts of uh, information, witness statements, documents, what you know, open source materials, what have you. Um, the second component is the analytical component. Um, what is, uh, and I don't speak to the sort of analysis that um, my colleagues uh, from the ICC have spoken about today, uh, and, and former colleagues. Um, um, I speak about uh, what we typically call political structure analysis, military analysis, um, some criminal analysis, and, and uh, of course, uh, legal analysis. Um, and I'm, I'm going to uh, I'm going to come back to uh, this issue at, in some detail because this is really the key to building effective, uh, winnable um, international criminal cases for international or domestic prosecution. And then the third component is, of course, the legal and uh, uh, prosecutorial uh, uh, element, and, and there is other uh, legal elements uh, in, in the investigative side. So, what are the what are the persistent weaknesses that uh, certainly, in my opinion, we see um, we see in, in uh, repeatedly in, in uh, domestic uh, jurisdictions, and, and um, sometimes, somewhat to my surprise, we still see them uh, in international bodies. Um, the first, um, and this is frequently a problem in, in common law jurisdictions. Um, oftentimes, the investigative analytical component is not well linked to the uh, legal prosecutorial. Uh, element. Um, this was uh, um, this was certainly a problem at the ICTY when I got there in 2000. Uh, subsequently resolved, um, basically by putting uh, trial attorneys in, in charge of the investigations. Um, it um, again, depending on the um, domestic jurisdiction one's looking at, this this can be a problem, um, principally in in common law or, or quasi common law uh, jurisdictions. Although not. To the best of mind, certainly not in the United States, but but uh, it is a pro it has been a problem in Canada um, and the UK. Uh, uh, two two uh, well, these are three areas that three countries that I know their practices quite well from my career. The second uh, uh, and most important uh, weakness or problem that we see um, uh, we still see it internationally from time to time, but it's almost. Uh, ubiquitous in um, domestic jurisdictions, whether they're Western or in, or in uh, developing uh, world, if you will. I don't know if I can. Can, I, can you say that term now? Developing world. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. There's some politically correct thing. You have to excuse me if I've used the wrong term. Um, um, yeah, developing world, not third world. That's. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I got it right. Um, Really, um, as I've hinted at already, um, um, analysis, political structure analysis, military analysis, and so forth, is absolutely central um, uh, to uh, uh, a successful international criminal investigation. And um, yet those resources are oftentimes absent or, or uh, insufficient. Now, um, what is analysis? Well. Um, let me give you uh, certainly my definition, which is very, very brief, going back to my opening point that um, everything has to be simple, otherwise I won't understand it. Um, analysis is effectively the, the transformation of information or raw data into, criminal, into, into evidence um, through its consideration in the context of the elements of the offenses and the legal requirements of the modes of liability, whatever set out in the, in the uh, international or, or domestic uh, uh, codes. Um, so it stands to reason that if you're lacking that uh, uh, element in your war crimes program, you're going to have a very, very difficult time getting through all the uh, masses amounts of data that are being hoovered up uh, and uh, figuring out what is rubbish and, and what, is, what is evidence. And then, um, so, um, and again, I, I may come back to that point. And, and then the third, 
the third and final uh, broad uh, difficulty that we see, um, and this is particularly a problem in um, domestic jurisdictions seeking to apply uh, ICHL if, if some elements, say, or of the Rome, Rome Statute offenses and modes of liability in particular have been incorporated verbatim into the penal codes. Um, there's a real failure to grasp um, the legal requirements of the, interna uh, the modes of liability set out in ICHL. Um, this is, this is a, a, a really a persistent problem. And, um, um, and that goes back to the second issue. Usually the root of that is, of course, lawyers who are not familiar with that legal framework, although it's not that complicated because most of the elements, uh, most of the modes of liability are, are, can be found in, in domestic penal law anyway. They're not uh, sui generis, um, if you will. Um, but uh, um, the, the, if you don't have the analytical component that's, that's acting as a filter taking this raw data and putting it against the elements of the offenses and the legal requirements of the modes of liability, the mental and material elements, um, then really you're lost. And that's, that's why the tools, uh, the legal tools project in particular is so very, very important. Um, this idea of giving free, uh, simple tools to, in particular to jurisdictions that could not afford this stuff um, uh, otherwise, is is very very important uh, initiative, uh, long-standing initiative now of, of the Case Matrix Network. So, um, right, what's what's being done to 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 address these issues? Uh, certainly, in domestic jurisdictions, um, in particular in in the developing world. Well, we have the Case Matrix Network and. And uh, um, I could sing its praises um, all night. And I de indeed, if there's a, is there a reception after? Or, uh, is, uh, I can go on outside uh, or in the smoking area. Um, we have a couple of other bespoke uh, uh, organizations that, that do training uh, for domestic actors. Um, Double ICI, uh, International Institute of Criminal, no, I, what is it? International Institute of Criminal Investigations, based here in The Hague, established by a former chief of investigations of the ICTY, John Ralston. We have an international organization, which is actually very, very small, Justice Rapid Response. I always think Justice Rapid Reaction, like investigators parachute out of airplanes into, uh, um, in a paramilitary sort of way. Um, now, the question is, the, inter the, the, the efforts of Case Matrix Network um, which brings the training and the tools, which really is a very important consideration. And the double ICI, Justice Rapid uh, uh, Response, um, does this make a difference? Well, it doesn't hurt, but it's, it's, it's not enough. And that is not, there's no implicit criticism of these groups. Um, um, uh, not at all, on the contrary. Um, why isn't it enough? Um, and it comes down to the simple fact that training is not the same as practice. And what's missing from the equation now is we have the training, we have the legal tools, um, uh, extremely uh, effective legal tools in my opinion, very, very user friendly. What we're lacking in the equation is mentoring. Um, um, I think that um, really the solution, and you know, each legal framework, each country is, is, is different. But ultimately, I think what we need to do is to bring domestic units, in particular in the developing world, up to the necessary standard, if the goal is not to secure convictions, but the goal is to, see, is, is to have fair trials and reap from those fair trials, whether it's a conviction or acquittal, um, all the um, um, sociocultural benefits that come through the uh, fair application of uh, uh, of, of ICHL or, or law generally in a post-conflict uh, 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 environment. Um, if, if that's our objective, then we need to have mentors in, embedded with, uh, uh, with um, offices of the prosecutor or the equivalent, the investigative components. Uh, indeed, for that matter, with the judges and defense counsel would be useful. Um, and that, in my opinion, is what's missing from the equation now. So um, I'm going to uh, uh, wrap up with, with this idea. 
Well, how would it work? Well, in principle, you know, you hire somebody um, who's available and I, I, ideally who knows what they're doing and uh, they go down and sit in Kinshasa or Jakarta or, or, or wherever and, and, and basically help out um, in, in, in these areas, uh, in particular with dealing with linkage or mode of liability elements of case building. Um, but donors for the most part, don't like funding mentors for some reason. It's something I've learned in, in, in the last few years where I've done a lot of donor-driven work. Um, mentors are relatively cheap compared to training. Um, um, you give someone, you know, six, eight, ten thousand dollars a month, um, you know, in a year it's a, you know, I don't know, I'm not a mathematician, but uh, I'm a secular humanist, so uh, anyways, you can figure out, figure out what that would be. Um, a training uh, can, you know, a couple of, a bit of a training scheme can cost a lot more than that. The problem initially really is with the donors, they, they, their, me their matrix uh, for measuring effectiveness is usually bums on seats and uh, training days and, and a lot of stuff like that. Um, so how do we solve the problem? Because it's very hard to change the donor thinking. Um, so what I would suggest is that I think, uh, and not that I want Case Matrix Network to, to do more work, but um, my idea for the Case Matrix Network is uh, this. Um, there's now in this, you know, mature period or the post-1993 the, the post period of uh, application of ICHL, we have a generation of men and women who have quite a few years' experience and are now um, have left the system, perhaps to go back to go to academia. Uh, Vladimir's case uh, have retired. I'm about to retire. There's an extraordinary, well, I, myself accepted, but there's an extraordinary pool of uh, 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 talent, uh, men and women who may still be working or or maybe uh, retired or semi-retired, um, who would still like to muck in on the operational side, and I think. Basically, they can be mobilized in many cases for three months, six months, um, for free or for a couple of thousand a month to support themselves in Jakarta. I've never been to Jakarta, but I, probably a pretty nice place. Uh, um, you know, Kinshasa might be. Uh, sorry, my apologies to my uh, my Congolese colleagues, but uh, um, you know, but these are these are practical, small practical difficulties. So what I'm suggesting is we need a bit of a Peace Corps or a volunteer program um, that individuals will sign up for who are prepared to be deployed for several months to sit with domestic authorities to add this, I think, key missing piece of the puzzle, which is, is, is to help with the linkage case, develop the, uh, uh, the, the mode of liability elements of, of a prosecution case. So I think with that, uh, I thank you very much for listening to me, especially so late in the day. Thank you.